challenge is after. And essentially what after wants us to do is to create a function after that takes the number of times the callback needs to be called before being executed as the first parameter and the callback as the second parameter. So essentially what we'll be expecting is that num of calls will be a number and our callback will be a function. So to get started, we know we're going to be utilizing closure for this function. So let's figure out the ways where we can take advantage of a JavaScript closure. So since after wants us to invoke our function with a particular uh, value after a number of calls, we it's safe to say that we can essentially set up a counter or a counter variable to check against a little bit later on. So we can say establish our count variable. Then once we establish our count variable, we know with every closure, we need to return a function. So we can say our closure, uh, closure requires us to return a function. So now we're expecting to return a function. What will happen when our returned function is invoked? So since we're establishing a count outside of our return function scope, what we can do is every time our return function is being invoked, we can increment that counter by one. So with our closures, we know we have access to what we call the backpack, or more technically speaking, the previous enclosed scope. So now we have access to that variable count. We can increment the count by one every time. So we can say each time our returned function is called, we need to increment our count. So our count is incremented, which is what we want, but we need to still figure out the logic of how we know after a number of calls to return the proper value. So what we need to check is that if our count is greater or equal to the num of calls, that's the num of calls that we passed in to our after function, then we should be able to properly return whatever our callback is invoked with the proper values. So we can say we want to check if count is greater or equal to the num of calls that was passed. passed in. And then in our if check, if that's greater or equal, then we return our callback being invoked with the values. And if not, we can just not return anything. And if we don't return anything in a function by default, it will be undefined. So let's start to code out what our after function will look like now that we kind of have our pseudocode ready. So we say we need to establish our count variable. So we can say let count equals zero. And then it says our closure requires us to return a function. So let us return a function. And I'm gonna have this on multiple lines and I'm going to copy this inside of our function body. So each time our function is called, we need to increment our count. So the first thing we could do is we take our count to be plus equals one. So essentially every time this refun return function is invoked, we're going to increment 
the count by one. And like I said earlier, we still have access to that count due to closure, our backpack. So this counter will be able to increment each time and still have access to the previous values of the last uh, invoked function. And then what we want to check is if our count is greater or equal to the number of calls, we want to return our callback invoked. And one thing we're missing is that we need to be able to pass in a value to our return function. So in our case here, I'm going to use something that's called the rest parameters, which essentially allows us to use any number of arguments when we call this function. So how the rest parameters work is that you can call your function with one argument, you can call your function with seven arguments. We may not know how many arguments we're going to pass into this function. So what the rest parameters allow us to do is to kind of set up our function to be uh, reusable no matter what we pass in. And our rest parameters will take every argument and store it in an array. So when we pass in our args to our callback, we don't want to just pass in args like this because we'll be passing in an array into our callback. So what we need to do is use an operator that looks exactly like our rest parameters, but in this case, it's the spread operator. And what the spread operator does is that it takes all of the values from an array and it literally spreads them out in individual elements. So if we had an array, I mean, if we called our function with one, two, three, the rest parameters would take the one, two, three arguments. They would store it in an array of one, two, three. And then what our spread operator will do is that it will spread out one, two, three as individual arguments in our function call. So that's exactly what's happening uh, here. So we said if our count is greater or equal to number of calls, we want to return our callback with the arguments passed in. And then, like I said earlier, if nothing, if it doesn't hit this if statement, then we ultimately return nothing better known as undefined. So just to make sure that this works, let's uncomment out these lines and let's run code. And we see we have our checks after should create and return a function as it does. The function return from after should not run the callback before it has been called whatever the count amount of times are. And the function return from after should run the callback with arguments after count calls. And then we see here we get undefined, undefined, and hello world. All right. Happy coding.